Um, hi, my name is Lester, and welcome to the first episode of Scudo the Banana. Uh, here is my group mates, Chester, Jennifer, and Crystal. And of course, Scudo. Scudo is our little host, and he will take us through our journey. For this episode, we will be talking about freshwater systems. We will first talk about lakes, ponds, and wetlands. Hi, so we're going to talk about ponds and lakes. The pond is a still body of water smaller than a lake. And the sunlight reaches all the way to the bottom of the pond. While the lake is a large inland body of fresh water or salt water. And the, the sunlight does not reach the bottom of the lake because of the deepness of the lake. Humans do a lot of things to alter the ecosystem. For example, to alter the flow of rivers. This is a model of farmland that has been altered by stream flow. An impermeable material is a material that has no pores, so it doesn't let water go in. And a permeable material is a material that has pores, so it lets water go in. So the bottom layer is an impermeable material. Um, it does not allow water to pass through. The, the layer that is up on top of it is a permeable material. It's either it's a aquifer that um, it lets water go through. It can be replaced by rocks or sand. The, the first layer is also a permeable material known as water table plus the surface. Um, the surface can be dirt or sand. It, is, it lets water go through. A watershed is a system that allows water such as rivers or ponds to drain into a larger body of water such as oceans or lakes. In a watershed, water drains down into a larger body of water, as you know, at, it like into drains into a larger body of water, such as rivers, lakes, and seas, and oceans. I'll give you a demonstration. Um, one example is the sink we use every day, unless you don't wash your hands. You see, we open the water, and the water drains into a larger body of water, that we cannot see, and that's the sewage. Example of a watershed is a real drainage that allows bodies, smaller bodies of water to drain into a larger section of water, such as ocean. When the water carries the rocks down the stream, the rocks scratch the bottom of the stream, and that is caused by erosion. There are two different types of erosion. One of them is cutting the bottom. The result of this happens because as the river pushes the rocks, the rocks by itself has a heavier rate than the water itself, causing to scratch when erosion occurs. The other type of erosion is changing the course of erosion. When the erosion is severe, it is best to reinforce or restore the banks with logs or other obstacles that can decrease this current. Fast flowing waters and a lot of other sediments erode through the banks and this may change the course of the water floating. Wells and springs work like this. As water goes on the surface of the first layer, which is a permeable material, known as a water table, then the water goes through another layer of a permeable material known as the aquifers. As the water goes through the last layer, which is an impermeable material, that is the underground. That causes the water to store into the aquifers, not letting the water to go up or down. But in order for wells and springs to work, we add a pump through all these layers to let the water go on the surface again. Through the several layers that the water went through, it makes the water cleaner. It's, it's just like water going through several layers of bedrocks. Contamination is caused by waste such as chemicals 
heavy metals, oil, and other pollution that co contaminates the water. Another problem is that wasteland could be another worry to the water. As the rain pour down into the garbage and the waste on the garbage goes with the water with them being carried down to the sea or lake or others. Another dilemma is in the law. It appears that there is too much water causing flood and other problems. This leads on to causing disaster in cities, farms, homes, built on flat plains, and others. <laughs> a, a dilemma in Alberta. There is too much water in the north and too little water in the south near the United States at Hudson Bay. We need water every day, but in the south, people use too much of it. Or the flow is fluent, and there is too little in water in Alberta because it doesn't have water naturally. It doesn't come naturally as Selena Gomez quoted. Humans do a lot of things that alter the ecosystem, such as the altering of the dream. <laughs> what the heck?